My name is Dr. James Lee and a professor of manufacturing and industrial engineer at UTRGV. I'm also the director of Center for Advanced Manufacturing, Innovation, and Cyber Systems. And Dr. Lee, the reason we're here is because you had the kickoff the other day, a few days ago, for America's Additive Foundry Consortium. Um, I was fascinated by, by the whole concept and, and the plans for what you have, and I thought I've got to come back and see you personally as you're leading this operation to find out more about it. So first of all, where did the name America's Additive Foundry Consortium come from? Well, we thought about the, some of the national you know, priority and also challenge, if you will. And to me, challenge sometimes become opportunity, right? So we looking at the, the challenge of securing the U.S. supply chain of tactical alloys. So which is a, a real a foundational industry sector for any country in terms of uh, advanced manufacturing. And we already had uh, estab established ourselves as a leader in uh, some advanced manufacturing technology relevant to this sector. So we were hoping that, you know, establishing our region as America's added foundry, we're going to play a leadership role in the future to reestablish U.S. Uh, foundry operation in our region. And then also Texas is uh, known for fabricated metal manufacturing, so we're the number one in the country in fabricated metal. Uh, so the, the, the area we focus on really going to reestablish Texas to adopt modern technology and continue leading in the country, in the world, um, advanced manufacturing for tactical alloys. And um, so you had the Department of Defense, some representatives came down to make the big announcement that the Department of Defense has invested $5 million into this consortium and uh, they must have been impressed uh, with your application and the consortium you, you've built. Tell us about your dealings with the DOD. Well, uh, in order to win large funding from the federal agency, you have to have the track record, right? So we are developing our track record since 2007 in metal, mm, you know, related manufacturing technology. So one of the focus we had was on metal additive manufacturing. So there are uh, a few advanced technology, you know, we are leading and then we are, we are going to acquire additional metal additive advanced manufacturing technology into the region. And the other thing, when we are preparing the proposal, I understand what is the priority from the agency, from the country, what is the uh, pain they have, right? So in order to uh, grow a compelling, uh, prepare a compelling proposal, there are some critical elements we have to include. So it's not only about research and technology development, uh, it's more uh, important, how do you make an impact to grow a stronger economy, to benefit your community where we serve, and also how do you uh, tackle the, uh, the grand challenge of manufacturing workforce. It's a big, big uh, uh, topic in the Department of Defense. Uh, so we, U.S. is leading in fundamental research in terms of uh, uh, investment and publication, but we lost our capability and the know-how of some of the fundamental manufacturing uh, technologies and sections. So that's why we try to come in and fill out that gap and hopefully in the end we not only do research and educate our own students but in the end they're going to become part of the workforce and help to grow a stronger manufacturing sector here in the region and then bring job opportunity for our uh, communities for the future younger kiddos we have. Yes, because at the meeting, at that kickoff event, we learned that I think it was since the 1950s, 
steadily the US has lost more and more manufacturing in terms of forging and casting and that much of that work has been outsourced to, to foreign countries, to mm -hmm. other markets. Yes. And it seems as though the federal government's trying to address that and, and, and bring some of that manufacturing back. That's exactly the purpose of this uh, you know, foundry consortium. And if you look at the history, history line, uh, really our human history is determined, defined by how do we understand the advanced materials and also make tools using those materials, right? So manufacturing is uh, it's a typical uh, sector that allow people to make tools to create wealth, right? Now, you look at the history line after World War II, U.S. has been leading um, uh, technically every manufacturing sector. But uh, recently, I think the offshoring, um, globalization, you know, has really uh, moved some of the critical manufacturing sectors uh, outside U.S., right? So it's golden time to bring them back, to prepare the workforce for them, and that's the fundamental sector, as I said in the beginning, in order to reestablish the world-class manufacturing uh, in U.S. Tell us about the consortium that you've put together, because this is a very big regional effort. Mm -hmm. Yes, I mean, in order to accomplish the goals and uh, the mission we have uh, together, we need to have critical partners, and we work together with them, and that's the formula for success, in my opinion. So from the federal level, from the national level, we have America's additive, uh, I'm sorry, we have American Mix, which is the DOD-funded U.S. Manufacturing U e Institute, and we have also Advanced Robotic Manufacturing Institute, and we have SME. So three of them gonna gonna help us to prepare and deliver the workforce program. So it's not just us. We have, you know, people around the country to help us uh, train. Uh, the workforce we have in our region, right? So the other uh, critical partner are the local governments, the economic development corporations across the, the region, including McAllen, South Texas, and Brunsville, Corpus Christi, Houston, San Antonio, and Austin. So we will, for sure, to start in our own community here in South Texas, right, in like a McAllen EDC. But eventually we're going to try to cover uh, the larger region we have in the South Texas. So critical elements uh, we were able to identify now, but uh, we will bring in additional components into the consortium as partners and including the entrepreneurs, including the uh, high school, middle school, and school districts, and Region 1 is already a, our partner, so we will go through Region 1 to recruit additional uh, high school, middle schools into our program. When we think of our region in terms of manufacturing, um, we're all aware just how heavy uh, a presence uh, manufacturing has just across the river in Reynosa, Matamoros, with the Maquilas. It's, um, you know, it's such an important part of that economy. But on the valley, on the on the U.S. side, the Texas side, we're not known so much for manufacturing. And yet, in the presentation we heard the other day, for me, it seemed a very ambitious goal. Like you were looking to bring in 200 uh, manufacturing companies or entrepreneurs from the from the private sector to come in and be part of this. Are, are they? Is that the, is there that many out there that you can bring in? Uh, well, we said a total of uh, sixty, close to seventy uh, new company we want to incubate and pitch. Uh, so those are really small firms, right? Not uh, large firms, but each one of them may support somewhere around uh, you know ten. Uh, uh, jobs, new jobs. 
So you're talking about maybe 700 jobs, right? But again, as I mentioned in the beginning, uh, the region we cover includes Houston, San Antonio, and Austin. So you consider the large region we have, that's a small number, right? So, and also this, uh, 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 this grant is just the beginning of our effort. And we are confident to bring in additional federal funding, um, you know, also private funding, and so that we can grow this very important industry sector uh, in the future. And um, when we think of forging and casting, it's like an old-fashioned, it's the basis, it's the, it's the building blocks for, for mm -hmm. manufacturing, and yet you're, bringing, you're, you're going to be bringing high tech, a high-tech component to all of this uh, to bring it up I I to, in, to today's world. Tell us how you achieve that. Well, you know, as you uh, mentioned earlier in the question about Maquila, right, uh, in Reynosa, Matamoros, and they have about 2,000 uh, manufacturers there, if I'm not uh, you know, mistaken. Uh, but uh, I've been uh, visiting those plants uh, after you know, we opened up uh, since the pandemic, right? So uh, when, I, uh, when I visit their production line, I realize you know, the industry is uh, abreasting robots to automate their facilities. So 80% of their uh, work uh, stations or uh, processes are fully automated with robots. So I start thinking, why not we set up, uh, you know, production lines here? Even if you're talking about we don't have, you know, as much labor as, uh, you know, they have over there on the other side of the r of the river, but they are not take advantage on low-cost labor anymore, right? So with that being said, we have the opportunity to grow manufacture here in our community, right? So if you can repeat the question again, I can <laughs> address your question a little bit better. <laughs> yeah, yeah and, and, and also, I mean, uh, I remember you said it's about robotics and things like that, right? The foundry operation, yes. Mm -hmm. That's in the old uh, conventional foundry operation. You have operators working in a uh, you know environment with with very high temperature and different different kinds of working environment, right? So this is not what we are pursuing in this uh, new effort. So uh, we are hoping to develop like uh, additive manufacturing technology, leveraging robots leveraging artificial intelligence and digital twin, virtual reality. So the workers and the engineers, they don't have to put themselves in that environment, right? Which nobody wants to be in. And, and so they can work like uh, scientists at NASA control room. They control the robots in an environment like we are talking today, right? So those high tech gonna really, uh, you know, in my opinion, uh, re-establish those foundry operations, uh, redefine the foundry operation, and then we can accomplish uh, the operation here, uh, establish the operations here uh, with high-tech, you know, uh, technology we have already. But the issue would be the awareness of those technology and our our students ready for those high tech or not, right? Entrepreneurs, are they aware of this? Are they uh, you know, willing to invest through those technology in one time? So in the long run, in 10 years, uh, you know, 20 years in the future, they can actually have the uh, technology support, they have the workforce ready for them to leverage on this, you know, more than technology we are talking about. But if, because of um, the pace of change, uh, the new technology has been developed all the time, uh, robotics coming into the maquilas, like you say, if having a skilled workforce is less important because robots, automation is taking care of more of the process <coughs> uh, of manufacturing all the parts needed for a particular product, what, what is our competitive advantage here in the Rio Grande Valley to have that manufacturing plant here? If, if labor's less important, 
overall, could that manufacturing plant not be built anywhere on this continent? What is our advantage? Well, I mean, the first thing I want to uh, emphasize, uh, correct, labor is still important, all right? And uh, it's just the skill sets is different, right? You can, you can use, uh, you can use robot to do this and that. Uh, just like uh, you know, starting from 1980s, we have computer that can do calculation for. They are assisting us to do things be better. It doesn't mean we don't need the human side of the you know uh, operation. We we need more actually. We need different skill sets though, right? So in order to run those uh, uh, robots in a, in, a, in, a, in a foundry operation, you really have to have somebody monitoring those robots, right? Even though they are, they consider smart, they consider intelligence, but they are not as intelligent as us. So in the end, the human robot interface need to be developed so that you know, you need engineers to d develop that interface, right? So once it's de developed, you need operators to take advantage of those new human robot interface uh, systems, whatever you call it. You call it the uh, digital twin, you call it the virtual reality, and so on. You need to prepare operators who are familiar with those new interface and then can operate those robots and to continue maintain and enhance the quality of the products that we manufacture with such a new system, a new technology. So it is uh, still very important to have uh, the labor that is ready, that is trained, and that is uh, you know uh, 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 familiar. I mean uh, that that is aware of the uh, newer technology and willing to learn new technology, right? So those are the key thing and. You mentioned about the uh, advantage we have, right? So we have really the young people here. And I mentioned uh, on Tuesday regard regarding our uh, population uh, distribution and percentage of uh, young people we have. I mean, you look at the number. We have 30% of our population enrolled in the K-12 schools, right? You know the national average, 15%. So that's double the national average. That means what? We actually are the future of the state of Texas, and we are the future of the country because we have a lot more younger kiddos here. They, when they grow up, they need to find a job. They need to find a high-paying job. So what kind of you know economic opportunity we gonna? you know, <laughs> produce for them, this is the time. We can't wait for 10 years until they grow up, right? So that's really going to become a setting point for us to attract the federal agency to invest their money to our region, and we can attract major players from the private sector to come and establish their facilities here. Uh, we got the technology, we got the workforce, we got everything for them to come down and establish and expand their business. And the last piece I have been talking about is our location, geographic location. We are in the middle of North America. We have a, a Mexico, you know, on the other side. We have U.S. on the other on this side. So we really cover the North, you know, uh, uh, America. We have we in a, a geographic location that gonna be able to cover both country. So, but again, I mean that's the, in my opinion, a significant geographic advantage we have. So I know it's very early days. It, the kickoff event was only this just this week, mm -hmm. but has there yet been any feedback from the private sector? Have you reached out to to the manufacturers? Uh, the all <coughs> the trade organizations um, are they excited about what what's going to be happening well I mean at this moment we try to set up the account we try to configure the uh, you know structure the uh, the consortium leadership team and but however I'm already talking to the private sectors right, including entrepreneurs in Matamoros so they are willing to 
come and set up high-tech manufacturing facility in, for example, in Brownsville, for example, in McAllen, right? So that is happening already. And we've all organized a webinar seminar to invite additional you know, entrepreneurs and you said uh, the local governments, the Chamber of Commerce, and through, through their uh, you know, channel, we can bring more uh, partners into the consortium. We can create a higher levels of awareness and uh, opportunity we, we provide. So hopefully, you know, uh, in the five year period of time, we will accomplish our, our goal. Yeah, five years is the length of the program. That's right, yeah. When you had to compete for this grant, um, I imagine you were in competition with other regions across the US. It was very competitive. Um, were you up against some very, very um, perhaps areas of the, of the country that were perhaps better known for manufacturing? Is this quite a coup for the Rio Grande Valley to, to, to get this project? It is a cool thing. It is an exciting moment to bring this opportunity to Rio Grande Valley. And UTRGV is the leading on the consortium. So that's the thing I, I feel very proud of our region. It's not an individual accomplishment. It's a team accomplishment. It's something I think I engaged the lots of partners in the region. So we were able to bring in this significant fund. Um, but in the meantime, mm, you know, this is a very competitive program. So every year they fund about six uh, communities. So we are designated by the Department of Defense as a defense manufacturing community. That designation alone means a lot, right? So, and then the funding, right? So across the, uh, the nation, six uh, entities are funded. And you know, the, some of the names are Cornell University, University of Michigan, New York, and this and that. So in Texas, the, the one selected is uh, UTRGV. So uh, we represent, right? We do have competitions with other regions, with other institutions, submitted the proposal, you know, grant proposal on the similar topic. So I, I, I feel, you know, very fortunate that we are selected. But in the meantime, it shows a lot that this region has huge potenti potential ahead of us. So I just want to do the right thing, do as much as I can, you know, as a faculty member here at UTRGV, to help the community a better future and better economic prosperity. And it's all, um, all the more uh, a remarkable uh, a success story you bringing this um, program here, given that we don't have that military um, history. I mean, obviously, San Antonio does um, with their air bases, but the Valley has not had that before. So this is this is new territory for us. The Department of Defense work. You're right. I mean, we don't have m much military operations. Uh, you know, uh, manufacturing operations here. So that's why we need to work with the region that already established with that kind of operations, right? So I was trying to bring in the DOD representative to come visit us. So that's been happening since, to, uh, you know, 2019, when we have the award from DOD to establish iDream 4D. I, I guess you covered that in the past. So through the iDream 4D, we brought in the laboratory scientists we brought in, uh, you know, leaders from the military. We brought in uh, uh, Under Secretary of Defense, uh, the honor Honorable, you know, Miss Hedy Shu, to come visit us. So when he saw the number of students, high school, middle school students we have, uh, you know, he, she was so impressed. She even took a selfie <laughs> with a group of students when he, she was touring the facility here. I mean, when I was in the uh, meeting at the uh, DOD organized meeting, so I met her again. So he, she called out my name in a, about you know 400 people uh, conference meeting. She said, "Hey, Professor Lee, I know you here. I want to you know recognize RGV because we have so much young talent here, 
and you guys, the DOD, uh, you know, agencies, uh, you know, uh, facilities, if you are looking for a workforce, go set up your facility over there. Set up a satellite facility at RGV. So that's what she was promoting after she noticed the talents we have here. So y you're talking about the advantage we have here. That's the number one advantage, we, the talents we have. But you have to make sure we have the program, we have the pipelines, so they become a talents for this region, for the country. So uh, as you mentioned it, how is iDream 4D going? How is that project going? Uh, this is a four-year program, and it's still going. And uh, you know, we are continue providing uh, internship programs for our students. We're still going to organize summer camps for the high school student and also middle school student. We're going to continue doing our outreach. And one of the things I want to share with you, we acquired uh, Boston Dynamic Robots. It's, uh, it's almost like a dog robots. It can walk. So we're going to bring that to the high school, middle school, and let the student to program and see how they can interact with the robotic dog. So those are something I'm, I'm very excited and I dream for d will continue and we, the, the program we offer will continue. Well, Dr. Lee, that, those were all the questions I had about America's Additive Foundry Consortium. Is there anything I've missed, anything else you want to add? to tell the public about this? I think uh, one thing I want to add really is that we try to connect ourselves to the entrepreneurs, to business incubation, uh, to the economic perspective of, you know, of the consortium. That's the part I have a uh, lot of confidence, but I need you, the media, to help us to disseminate that opportunity to our community partner, to our you know parents and you know uh, 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 entrepreneurs and students, they may become part of the you know un entrepreneurs. They may may become the next you know millionaire or billionaire. Who knows, right? So we just want to. Uh, to, uh, to take advantage uh, uh, on you guys so that you can help us to disseminate this opportunity as much as, as you can. We appreciate that though, also. And those millions and billions that can be earned, entrepreneurs can achieve that through engineering and manufacturing. That's right. I mean, uh, this may be the closing mark, I, uh, if you allow me. You know, we really want to create our entrepreneurs that who are born here, grew up here, and who, you know, create the, the wealth here in our region. And in, 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 in the end, they will return. They would uh, support our community in return, right? That, that's really a, a loop I'm looking forward to. That's the formula that we can become successful together. That's what uh, the Kuding, <laughs> Dr. Kubash, always promote. How do we work, collaborate among the, you know, among us from different areas we cover here and become successful in the end? So really we are only a small part of the big thing. UTRTV is uh, promoting in the region. So I'm happy to be able to contribute to that big uh, landscape we are uh, creating. And I want to thank you so much for coming and talk to me regarding what we are able to do. Very important remarks to end on. Thank you so much, Dr. Lee. We've learned a lot. Thank you.